Well, guys, <laughs> it, it is uh, Saturday. Uh, man, I got flux all over my file. I gotta go spray it down now. Um, I was watching Mr. Holster's sock show, which I thought was a really good show because he talked about the revolvers. Y'all know I like revolvers. <laughs> I always found this uh, so interesting and he brought up a lot of good points that, you know, back in the times, you know, revolvers were king and what do you think everybody used? <laughs> What do you think people like Bat Masterson used and Wyatt, Wyatt Earp and <laughs> Wild Bill Hickok? <laughs> so I thought that was really neat to um, that he mentioned all that because that's so very true. So yeah, you can be really good with one. That's for sure. I mean, what do you think people had before? I mean, you know, all this uh, tactical stuff wasn't always around. So you gotta kind of remember that. And I think some of that gets out of control where you know, somebody's just like, their whole life is just, you know, tactical this, I gotta have this, I gotta have that. I mean, it's like next thing you know, you're, you're looking at somebody and you're kind of scratching your head going, are they trying to star in the next Rambo movie? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've been uh, messing around here at work. I brought it with me. Uh, Saturday is usually a really slow day at work. Um, yesterday, of course, I uh, closed down because right next door, I guess they had some sort of issue, bomb threat, I don't know. Uh, cops had the whole bottom road blocked off and uh, just didn't want to be involved in all that mess. So, you know, I'd rather s stay home and, <laughs> you know, watch a, watch a movie or something, to read a book. Um, I've been really liking my Kane Hodder book. I've been off and on reading this and uh, reading my Nightmare on Elm Street book, and so, uh, and also looking at a really cool John Wayne book that I got for my birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, there, I've been enjoying it. I've been just fascinated with all the photos in it and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. And what did I mess around with at work here? Just kind of tinkering around while they're doing the final touches. I had to go down and I bought the uh, spray paint. This is the red, uh, the red right here. It's a gloss paint. I should have bought flat. Next time I'm going to look for flat. Uh, I got the uh, cheapo black right here and uh, just finally riveted it all together and did the new Dream Warrior glove. That's just the armature uh, that's ready to ready to get put on a leather glove with the new blades and I did do the, uh, the new um, painted hazy blades that makes it actually what you do is you you hold the spray paint can far away from it and you just miss the blades and they're just basically barely getting them on there um, and it gives it the appearance of the aged kind of rusty blades and it also will help serve try to protect the, the sheet metal that I'm using for this. Of course the 16 gauge so this stuff's gonna be pretty tough. You can actually claw right through a cardboard box. Um, I The reason I went with the spray paint is because if you actually look at the uh, the part 4 glove that's what they used to age it so all the uh, areas right here you just kinda it's kinda neat I like it. Uh, you spray it and you just kinda you know go over it with some sandpaper and all the rough edges that will eventually pan out and uh, age itself as the copper will naturally turn its color and so yeah I'm really satisfied this is a lot larger of a back plate this is that back plate you guys were seeing in the vlogs I've been working on so I can't wait to get home and get this thing on the on the leather uh, I gotta still work on discarding or discoloring the leather so and uh, yeah oh and um, some good news I actually today um, I sold the glove so I got the order in, somebody wants one, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start working on theirs. Uh, they have a little bit bigger hands and longer fingers, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to alter the templates just a little bit, but yeah, I got to uh, selling a glove. How about that, 100 bucks? So, yep, sold the glove for 100, and get ready to get put that together. That's gonna be fun. And yeah, I, again, man, that's cool because it turned my hobby and fun thing into paying me back a little bit. So that's always cool.
It's raining. Huh? Oh yeah, this camera works. <laughs> wow. Where do you get these steamers from? Gaspro. Oh, Gaspro has these. No, Gaspro. That was almost three hundred dollars. For this one? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's smaller. Yeah, smaller. Yeah. But since we make every year, it must be all the month, you know what I mean? Right. I think a couple of those would be perfect, right? <laughs> but perfect $200? We're going to be out here till midnight with we this? Get, so we can turn it in there for the thing. But not me. <laughs> not you? <laughs> not me, I I'm pretty sure about <laughs> <laughs> Late night rain. It's been raining lately. Almost, I'll tell you, it's like winter is like the rainy season or something. I don't know. I don't know. Hawaii's just got weird weather. You never know. Oh look, finished uh, my dream, my new Dream Master glove, the, uh, the 16 gauge uh, blades, there it is all, all done, left handed of course, the ones I built for myself were left, it's got the flat ringlets, much like the uh, movie, the Blood red tips and fingers, all blood red, very much like the movie. Blade shapes, the solder spills on the knuckles, or close as I can get them. Bigger back plate, very aged, random solder splatters and smudges. Glove, fairly aged. Um, as all this, as you begin to use it and mess with it, it'll it'll get more aged and all that stuff. So, yeah. So, yep. I guess I gotta build one for the the order and uh, get that one sold. Hundred bucks. Uh, that's what I sold it for, so I'm gonna get build that one. This is mine. I'm gonna keep this one for myself. <laughs> okay, so one other thing I'm gonna do is you see the rivets here, they attach the fingers. I'm going to just lightly spray the tops with the black. I the spray paint was the really key thing to a lot of this to making it look the way it does, uh, which is the pretty much identical to the movie so you just kind of get it hit it with overspray really is what you're doing so you can here see it just kind of hit a little bit and wait for that to dry and scrape it here you can see um, once you take and can just kind of scrape away uh, some of the excess that's what it looks like yeah hey uh, he's getting fairly late here um, so I'm going to go ahead and close it out. I got to finish that uh, glove. So there it is. Uh, really happy with it. It's uh, getting better and better at making these things. And uh, really cool news is being able to uh, sell somebody one. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that one. And yeah. So it's kind of interesting because I like to see just how, how much more improvement it can get into making these things and being able to use the sheet copper 
uh, instead of because the sheet copper really is a lot easier to work with in the end so and uh, this seems to be just the correct gauge to work with on that all right so the other clip you saw was uh, <laughs> those uh, giant uh, canisters looking things they're steamers and out here the um, the locals like to eat this thing called lao lao I don't <laughs> so that's what that is um, little uh, season holiday thing that's kind of what everybody does out here I just join in and help I don't actually eat this stuff so <laughs> All right, a um, movie we're going to talk about is a movie that I'm sure the most of you that remember it and remember when it uh, came out in theater, uh, just all the, everything surrounding it, um, a lot of uh, frightening uh, aspects of it and everything, and I'm talking about the movie The Exorcist, the original movie directed by William Friedkin. Um, based on the book by William Peter Blatty. This is still to this day, I think holds its, it holds up as probably one of the most scariest movies. Even though I think the, the whole exorcist thing has been overdone numerous times, no matter how many different ones they make, you know, the exorcism of this, the exorcism of that, the last exorcism, the beginning of the exorcism, all that nonsense, none of them hold or possess, I think, the power that this one does. Uh, this one is truly frightening. Uh, even my mom swears she, she said she saw it once and she'll never watch it again. <laughs> so, uh, it's one of my favorites and here's an interesting little factoid for you that uh, the guy that did the special effects for this is the same guy that did the special effects for the movie Taxi Driver. Wouldn't you know it? He's also um, the guy that kind of invented bladder makeup and what I mean by that is um, he's the guy that invented stuff that was underneath the skin that would able to fill up and do things and strange stuff like that. Um, a clear note about that would be if you remember in the movie Taxi Driver when Robert De Niro breaks out the 25 auto that's in his sleeve and and blasts the guy in the face and you actually see the holes appearing in the guy's face and the blood running out that's a classic Dick Smith the special effects guy uh, he had passed away I think he was one of the key key guys of special effects in the back in the 70s and whatnot so anyway I'm gonna get out of here thanks for watching